Let's see, I have to share my screen for this one and I couldn't share it before because it would take over their stuff. We're gonna do an abridged version of my my talk on on choosing the right technology tools. Uh, let me introduce your next speaker. Hey, it's me, Derek. Uh, you may have noticed me from things such as 10 minutes ago. Uh, no, I'm just messing around, but it's good to have you here. And I do really want to take a minute to, to give you our process of choosing technology products. I have met with over 270 merchants to understand their business and their technology stack and then help them make recommendations for them to grow their store. I would be happy to meet with you and do the same. We do this for free for merchants. We're able to do it for free because of our extensive partner network of over 300 and 10 partners with over 110 listings that we vetted on our site, which I told you about at the beginning of the day. Uh, and you can check all that out over at ecommercetech.io. Now, just in case you don't know who I am or what I do, uh, you know, my past really isn't even that, that important, but I've been in e-commerce, I've been in e-commerce technology, I've ran a digital marketing agency, I played high stakes poker for 10 years, I've invested, I've lost money uh, in companies, I've I've lost money selling companies, It's I've, I've kind of been all over the board, but uh, really just completely dedicated for the last two years and for the next 10, I'd imagine, in understanding the e-commerce technology landscape better than anybody else. That is uh, my job personally, but it's also the, the role of our company is to bring transparency to this ecosystem and help you make better decisions as a merchant. Um, really quick, if you'd like a little bit more transparency, you can go to ecomtech.link forward slash landscape. Let me uh, plug that into the... Where, where'd my notes go? Uh, because I'm presenting, I'm losing the thing. I'll put it right here in the chat. Three, two, one. You can go over there, download that thing. Um, and, and it's a large PDF. It's like 34 megabytes. So it'll take a second to download. And if you want to be listed on it, you can submit uh, your app to be listed on there as well. That just gives you like a quick overview of the landscape. I've seen merchants print it out, but uh, truth of the matter is when you're thinking about a tool or looking at a certain category, just go check that sheet and you'll be like, oh, these are probably the leaders in that space. Uh, Shopify has over 6,000 apps in, in their store. We don't list all of the apps in the world. We list the ones we've hand vetted and uh, tend to be the more mature players in each of these spaces, I would say. All right, we're gonna skip through all these slides actually. Usually I talk about the ecosystem and how it's changed, but we don't have enough time for that. So uh, if you want the slide deck, you can message me afterwards. You've probably gotten 400 emails from me uh, in the last two days. So you, you definitely have my email address. So let, let's just start at the, at the basics of choosing the right technology product, okay? So usually um, I, I wanna just think about like, like this is probably how you're doing it today. And I'm gonna show you a better way of, of how to choose technology products. Right now, it usually starts with a small fire that starts growing and growing until a big fire that you finally realize you need to put out. Then you take one of your team members who is likely underqualified and focused on one specific activity, let's say it's answering customer service emails, and you task them with finding the right help desk, let's just say, for, for sake of uh, our partners over at Gorgeous who spoke yesterday. This customer service agent, they have no real experience in choosing technology products and probably don't understand the cohesiveness of how this tool will need to integrate with the rest of your stack, but they're on it. Their next step is pretty obvious from here. They are going to reach out to our one and only overlord, Google. They're going to search the web and uh, and, and hopefully find something good in the top three search results because anything lower than that and they're, uh, they're not looking at it. So uh, hope, hopefully those top three results give them a nice short list of tools to try out. And at the end of this very scientific process through all of the demos, which are unavoidable, all the Facebook group posts asking, hey, which tool do you use? And looking up what your competitors are doing and maybe just finding a tool that uh, just randomly like uh, feels like it's gonna work for your company. You've hopefully got buy-in from management to afford the pricing on it. And you're finally choosing a tool and going with it. So. It's a very risky process. You, uh, a lot of people don't understand the cost of making the wrong decision here, or the cost of getting a tool where the when there's nobody to manage it, manage it, and the or the cost of uh, of of having to switch back, and and the cost on the consumer, and all those things. There's there's just a lot of risks that go into this. So I want to give you a really simple way to go about this. This is just like a seven step process. I should put check boxes here instead of uh, instead of numbers. I think that'd be good, and just give you that checklist. 
And so that every time you're looking at a new tool, you go through the checklist, you make sure that somebody's assigned to, to take this task on and that there's accountability inside the company. But let me just run through it for you very briefly. Needs analysis. What do we actually need from this product? Um, we saw Shopify inbox yesterday and uh, today it's now live. Thank you, Chris, for sneak peeking that for us. Shopify inbox, great it's like starting tool, has some basic rules and automation components to it, but it might not have everything. Maybe you need like specific form fills or you need advanced automation or AI to your tool. Immediately you'd be like, okay, Shopify inbox is no longer for me. If you can start to rule things out when you clarify your needs before going into the market and searching for a tool. Integrations are part of the needs analysis and very, very important because you do not want a silo. You can't afford a silo these days. Oftentimes, if you're on Shopify or Shopify Plus, that is one of your sources of truth for data. A lot of data pushes back into Shopify and then other tools can pull it out of Shopify, but you may need direct integrations with tools. I know we've got uh, Jamila fra from Farah coming in. Review tools often need to talk to loyalty tools, need to talk to email service providers. So as a basic uh, example, like you, you need to make sure that the review tool you choose integrates with your email service provider and your loyalty platform. Kind of obvious, but people forget this. And it's just one of those things that that have to be done from the onset. Otherwise you're gonna find a tool that's like, oh, this is perfect. Oh, except it integrates with none of our stack, great. Uh, and of course, most tools in the e-commerce space are doing a very good job at integrating with each other. They're playing very nice. Um, two things to look out for on the integration side is if somebody says, oh, we can custom API into that, it's usually not nearly as good as a direct integration. Uh, and if they say that it's on the roadmap to build that integration, like don't hold your breath, don't don't choose somebody uh, based on just waiting for that. Um, and and some people are building out their their integrations quickly, but um, but still you you need the solutions to work from day one. Budget is of course a thing. How much can you afford to pay for this? Now budget should also be formed. Everyone is worried about cost, and not enough people are thinking about return on investment. Things like personalization tools, it shouldn't really matter how much it costs if, if it's making you more money. SMS marketing is another great example. And you heard from Constant Contact earlier about the ROI of email marketing. So what does it matter if you pay $300 a month for email service provider? If it makes you 10,000, it's fine. Now there are some tools that can provide similar functionality for slightly less, but it's very rare that you should be switching providers on cost alone. It should always be about driving top line revenue. Cost should be a secondary or tertiary uh, consideration in that regard. Now that you do have this real thing, number four, switching costs and lock-in costs. This is an indicator of how much effort and energy you should put into choosing a tool. So just as a basic example, email service providers have a lot of marketing automation to set up and tagging and all these custom fields that you have to build out and, and images you have to upload and branding and all this stuff. So there's a, there's a high switching cost to move from one to the other. Uh, on the flip side, maybe uh, just going back to review tools it might be easier to switch because a lot of review tools have an export or import functionality where you can take all of your existing reviews and move them over. So it's a lower switching cost. And that's not saying you should be switching tools in, in this category more or anything like that. It just means that as you're vetting a tool provider, if it if it is you know 80% of what you need today or 90 or 100% of what you need today, but you feel like you're going to outgrow it, if the switching costs are low, that can be perfect. It can be the great solution for year one and two, but you think you'll outgrow it in year three and four, that's fine. If the switching costs are high, you should consider investing in a tool that has, uh, has a little bit more scalability to it, and you might have a little bit more of a budget concern or cons uh, cost to it uh, today. As an example, anything that, um, like email service providers and SMS providers, anything that, and personalization tools that kind of, um, they'll, they'll naturally provide more value with larger audiences, larger uh, website traffic and all that stuff. Anything like that, if, you, if you're a low traffic site, even at like 10,000 monthly visitors, a uh, high-end personalization tool probably too early, but as you grow to 50,000, clearly becomes a lot more valuable. So you can think about that value uh, based on points of scale in your business and make a decision as to, do we buy for today? Do we buy for the future? And understanding how you went, might need to revisit certain technology choices as your brand grows and scales. All right, from there, you create the short list of like two to three, usually uh, up to five, if it's a really big decision. 
tools that you want to vet in the space, you should almost never go with just one. And that's probably the number one mistake I see people thinking about. Now, every I'm here with a whole bunch of speak, speakers that are tool providers in this two-day event, and I'm sure they'd all love you to just go with their solution and not look at the competition. But I'm here to tell you, it's okay to look at the competition. It's okay to ask them who their direct competitors are. And it's it's okay to, um, your it's your money and your choice. So you get to, you can, Take that uh, that that power and and make sure that you're you're deciding the right provider to go with. Now that doesn't mean you get to negotiate on price very often. Most tools are set in pricing, so don't get too cocky with that power. But yes, you should be looking at at least two solutions for most uh, major decisions over like ten dollars a month. Demos are very important. You're just going to want to see the basic feature set. Make sure it aligns with your needs analysis. You could watch a webinar or an onboarding video, but I do prefer that sales demo. Listen for cues from uh, for, from the sales rep as you go. And then, of course, you might have a testing or onboarding period. Anytime you can, I do recommend rolling out tools, especially tools that change that front-end user experience. In a true A-B split test, you can use a tool like Google Optimize. Put the JavaScript code in the top of 50% of your instances, and then it'll only show uh, for 50% of your audience, and then you'll see the change in conversion rate or signups or whatever your core metric is. Now, I've kind of covered some of this already, but uh, some questions to ask yourself as you're going through this vetting process. Is the tool built for e-commerce? Uh, is it solving the core metric? And what metric is this tool looking to improve for my store? So being very specific about that and then measuring the, the difference, of course, right? Who in my team is actually going to manage this solution? I think this is uh, this is often uh, neglected. Um, and, and this is where it leads to things like, uh, like, like, uh, like not like forgetting that there's a tool in your stack that nobody's using. So like if, you know, if you're paying $800 a month for a tool and it's not sending one message or whatever, something like that, you're probably wasting a lot of money. And if you don't have a person who's responsible for reporting on it and proving it's ROI every month, then you are likely going to at some point forget about it. And that's dangerous. Pricing for value. So a lot of tools, um, especially in conversion rate optimization or in finance, take a percentage of sales. And you have to think about like, uh, is, is that fair to me? And as an example, like again, SMS tools will often take credit for any sale that comes from a click through from the text message. But you know that you also drove that person from a Facebook ad, they saw an email from your email service provider, and they used a personalization widget to increase the average order value. So the actual revenue generated from the SMS wasn't 100% of the sale, but they're going to charge you based on the sales that come in through that click. So now you're kind of being overcharged. Now, if it's a smaller percentage or something like that, yeah, that's okay. Just know that sometimes um, there, there's a little bit of misalignment in how you might be uh, charged, what, what they're uh, charging pricing based on. It's really important to understand. And then we already mentioned features and integrations. When possible, I do recommend not signing contracts unless you're doing a tool probably over three, four, five thousand dollars a month. But at the end of the day, you should be able to cancel any of these tools anytime because it's their job to provide value to you, not your job to guarantee them revenue. It's it's the opposite, right? Um, when you, yeah, the the more uh, the bigger the decision, the more patient you should uh, be, and and you can definitely take your time with some solutions. I'm going to show you some tools in just a second. Uh, but if they, if, if you are too small, if you're doing like 200, $300,000 a year in revenue and the tool is going to cost $500 a month, it doesn't matter how cool it is and how much you want it, it can actually break the business, especially when it comes to your impact on margin. People don't think about how like an email service provider, let's just say they charge, I don't know what it is, $50 a month for 3,000 contacts. Well, divide, divide it and do the math. What's your cost per contact? And how are you, is that uh, going to impact uh, each order, right? So if you assume one order per contact or something like that, then each uh, each contact is costing you, let's just say two to three cents on an order. Is Are you calculating that into your, on top of your cost of goods sold to understand marginal impact and then understand profit margins? Um, when sales rep cues, whenever a sales rep says something like, oh, we usually deal with people that are 10 times larger than you or something like that, that is a cue that you're in the wrong uh, meeting and need to get out of there. You, you are not ready for tools like that. They'll still sell you on it, but you shouldn't buy it. Um, we already said competitors and resource, pricing transparency and fairness. I love a tool called Spently, which helps you uh, with your notification emails and sending uh, and making sure that there's uh, there, there's like kind of like upsells and other information in those notification emails that Shopify automatically sends out. What I love the most about them is that if you 
move down in uh, in sends of those emails for you know net for one month, they'll automatically lower your monthly recurring rate. That is pricing transparency and fairness. If I've ever heard of it, for other people, they charge on your like maximum contact level. And when you move up a tier, they just keep you at that tier, regardless of whether you clean out your list or something like that. You have to like force your way back down or, or talk, talk to a rep or something like that. Um, so it's, it's not as ideal. We already mentioned lock-in costs, um, customer success and support. The less you know about uh, about a technology, like if you don't know email marketing at all, then you need a good customer success and support team to help you uh, get through and make sure your automations and all that stuff are set up. And finally, uh, if the company is funded, they are likely going to be growing faster, which means more features and more benefits to you in the long haul. So funded companies should be slightly favored over non-funded companies, but for the most part, it always starts with a baseline feature set integration set. All right, this is just a list of tools that you could use based on the stage of your business. I'm not even gonna go into it. Here's just some fun tools uh, to talk about, and we're already uh, looking to just go into the next session because we've been running late, so I'm not gonna go over too many of them. Caro is up later today, so we'll skip that one. Spark Toro, founded by Rand Fishkin, really cool at understanding influence, the search engine for influence. Recart, we talked about yesterday, gorgeous, you heard from them. Some cool uh, advertising tech tools. Copysmith.ai is able to create different variations of your SEO title tags, meta descriptions, product descriptions, and a few, uh, and ad copy, which is really great because humans are notoriously bad at creating variants. So it's like, if you tell me, you know, the description once, I'm not really able to just like, I don't know, manipulate it into 10 different variants. People are kind of one track mind in that way, but AI has come a long ways in the last few years. And I believe is is totally up to speed. We can uh, AI can write copy, especially short form copy, a lot better than us. And in the next two years, blog posts will probably largely be written by AI. It's it's really getting close there. Pencil is an amazing video ad creative tool. If you're doing over about thirty thousand a month in ad spend, highly recommend checking out this tool, especially if you've got in house creative team. Uh, it'll save them a ton of time, but it, it'll also make you more money on testing ad creative. It'll increase your return on ad spend. And uh, and it's just like a really easy. Like they, you can make what one ad uh, automatically pops out in five different formats for you. It's like, oh, perfect. That's awesome. So, so all of those videos that you have somebody have to create back to back, it's done in a second. And then you can just change the copy and all that stuff instantly, test all the variants. And it's smart with understanding the language and the order of this testing. So you actually get a lot of key learnings out of it. Rockerbox, I think we mentioned yesterday a little bit, amazing attribution tool when you're doing multi-channel marketing, it'll actually break down uh, where the revenue is coming from. Use generated content tools like StoryPop, 460, Site, if you are doing over, I'd say 50,000 visitors a month, and especially with a really high SKU count, and you want people to be able to search visually, really amazing tool for that. They are one of the, they're an enterprise solution, so they are a bit more upmarket. Uh, they, they, their cost starts at the three or $4,000 mark. I'm not even exactly sure, but you can, um, it, but you can bet that they're going to be one of those upmarket conversion rate tools. And they've got competitors, LimeSpot, Just Uno, uh, Nosto, Rebuy, and, and a few others, but their, their visual, uh, search tool is what makes them really cool and different. So I wanted to mention Okendo, uh, great review tool, but we've got competitors coming up that I think they'll, they'll, they'll sell you on, on their differentiation. Upsell tools, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Phoenix Commerce is really great because it's basically just always increasing conversion rate. Um, all they do is this one simple thing, estimated delivery by Saturday, June 27th, 2020. You see that right there? And that's on the product detail page, it's on the cart page, it's on the checkout page, and it's able to uh, kind of assuade people that, that are wondering, when is this going to get to me, right? That's like one of the number one questions they ask in uh, customer service inquiries. And this predicts that land to date based on their location and uses all of your past data to understand which warehouse is this product gonna be shipped out of and how likely is it to arrive by that time. And then it helps you fulfill on that. Increases conversion rate somewhere between 14 and 30% for pretty much, they've told me that they've never failed a conversion rate optimization split test. So they've always improved conversion rate Con conversion rate for all of their clients. Now, uh, it is a little bit more of an upmarket solution for the brands doing, I'd say over about three, five million is when it comes into play. Sezzle, all buy now, pay later tools are great. Sezzle is one of my faves. They're a certified B Corp uh, and they have really competitive rates in the industry. 
uh, buy now, pay later works for even low average order value brands and even for uh, old school uh, brands selling like uh, to the older generations. Route, we're about to hear from them, so I won't even mention it. <laughs> we'll, we'll, I'll bring him on in just one minute, Nate, please hang tight. Uh, Caro, we're actually gonna talk to them. Um, Loma price stack is a really cool one um, that is able to predict how much sale, how much revenue and how many order units are gonna be sold based on your change in price point. So you can actually optimize for price for one of the, probably the first time you've ever technically optimized for price. So you can say, okay, is a discount better than a promo code discount, better than uh, an, uh, the total discount? You can predict revenue and prof uh, profit based on percentages off that you wanna offer people or how much inventory you have in stock or simply trying to maximize uh, yeah, whatever whatever metric you want to maximize. You, you really only ma maximize for three things, profit, revenue, or customers. It's one of those three and whichever one you want, you just plug it in, their algorithm will spit out the answer based on your past sales volume. So it's, really, it's using real AI to come up with real answers to what you should be pricing your products. Pricing is a competitive pricing tool. All right, that's it. Uh, good, we got to move into the next talk. If you want to book a console with me here, I'll share this in chat really quick down below. Um, yeah, and Kimmy says, roadmap tip, if it's on their roadmap equals zero value. If it is an active project in the beginning stages, add three to six months to their target launch date. That is hilarious because uh, that is exactly um, the, the way that I would I would uh, recommend it. Kimmy, you asked if I used to play at Bayo 101. Yeah, Bayo 101, Lucky Chances is where I got started. And uh, I spent a lot of time playing in San Diego, Ocean's Eleven and Palomar Card Club. Don't remind me about the 18 months I spent daily in the Power Mar Palomar Card Club, grinding out 510 No Limit. Um, it was, it, I made money, but like, there, there are a lot of things that you should be doing in your 20s and sitting in a card room all day is not the best use of your time. Let me go ahead and get this link for you. Here, I'm gonna share this in chat. Uh, if you want to book a consult with me, it's completely free. We just talk through your existing stack, your existing tools, what's working in the business, some of your core metrics. And then uh, and then we're able to make recommendations from there, build a roadmap for you. Uh, and finally, on that front, just to give you a sneak peek of what we're up to, we are building the world's first ever recommendation engine to connect e-commerce teams with the right e-commerce technology solutions. So in about uh, seven or eight months here, we'll be launching our Shopify app in the store. You'll be able to install it for free. It'll pull in your stack data, and then it'll be able to make predictions on which tools are going to benefit you the most. I'd love to have you in my alpha and beta tests. If you're interested in that, reach out to me. You've got my email address. I sent you an email probably in the middle of this presentation. Uh, and that's it. I'm moving into the next topic.